Thanks for watching. I'm Margot Kimberg, and this is In the Spotlight, a closer look at a crime novel. Crime novels in which the sleuth's personal life plays a role in the plot can add an extra layer of character development and an extra layer to the plot as the reader finds out about the sleuth's past. After all, we all have one. Let's take a look at a novel like that today and turn the spotlight on Sarah Blydell's The Killing Forest. As the story begins, Louise Rick has just returned to work with Denmark's Special Search Agency as part of the National Police after an extended medical leave. No sooner has she come back to the office than she gets a new case. A 15-year-old boy, Sune Franzen, has gone missing from the small town of Velsu. It seems he participated in an ancient Viking ritual on the evening of his disappearance, and he hasn't been seen since. Louise and her assistant, Egg, start the work of trying to locate the boy. They begin by finding out who was at the ritual and interviewing those people. Almost immediately, Louise gets the sense that there's more to the th things that happened than the men they interviewed are telling. Even soon his own father, who was at the ritual, seems to be holding something back. Still, they use forensics and other information to try to find out what happened to Sune and where he might be. At the same time, Louise has another agenda. It turns out that she's met Sune's father, Lars, the local butcher, before. He was one of the last people to see her former partner, Klaus, before Klaus committed suicide. Meeting Lars again brings back painful memories. Anne raises questions. Louise wants to know the truth about Klaus's death. Did he really commit suicide? Was he murdered? She's gotten hints that he did kill himself and hints that she didn't, so she can't be sure. So while she and Egg search for Suni, she also searches for the truth about Klaus. In the end, they find out some long buried dark secrets. So what holds this novel together? What are the elements in it and the threads that run through it? Well, as I said, there's a blending here of Louise's personal history with the search for Sunni. The local people know her and the two cases she's working on are connected in a way. It's one of those cases too where the sleuths and loved one will find real danger. Readers who prefer the sleuths' personal life to be separate from the case will notice all of this. The story is told in third person, past tense, from a few points of view, Louise's, Sune's, and Sune's best friend Camille Lin for three. So readers get to know the characters. Louise is recovering emotionally and physically and haunted by Klaus's death. That said, she doesn't sink to the bottom of a bottle, but she's hurting. And she's obsessed with finding out what really happened to Klaus. She and Ake are in a sort of relationship, although it doesn't take over the story. The novel takes place in a small Danish town, and Blydell places the reader there clearly. We see how the local people interact, and it's clear that some of the locals are a very tight-knit group who are very uncomfortable with outsiders. There's also a clear picture of the surrounding areas so that readers are also placed in the physical setting. The solution to the mystery is a very sad one, and it's got roots in the past. There's been a lot of silence over the years when speaking out could have ended everything. That said though, there are moments of humor and everyday moments. And at the end of the story, we see that things will be all right for Louise. Still, readers who are looking for a light, easy read will notice that this isn't one of them. The Killing Forest shows how past crimes and tragedies cast shadows over the present, including the present of the sleuth's life. It takes place in a small Danish town where all the people know each other and features a detective who wants to lay her own ghosts to rest. This has been In the Spotlight. I'm Margaret Kinberg. Thanks for watching.